Let us continue to talk about the nutrition processes in human. Okay. Now,、uh, last time we finished talking about the absorption of food, and now we move on to the assimilation of food in human body, which is on your notes page eighteen.、Uh, now, as for assimilation, it seems like it is a very complicated process, right? But in fact,、uh, it is nothing new, and it is actually talking about how food,、uh, after absorption, is utilized in our body. Okay, so we have actually covered all these in our first term.、Um, now let's have a look. After the absorption of glucose or monosaccharide, these monosaccharides or glucose is used by body cells to release energy to, in the process of respiration. Please help me to change the word "produce" into "release." Okay. And to- when talking about respiration, many of you would have a false con- concept that respiration takes place in the lungs. Yes, but actually, respiration is a cellular process that takes place in every living cell. When we have、um, extra amount of glucose, that is excess glucose, this glucose. Can be converted into glycogen, which is a storage form of carbohydrate in、um, animal cells, and then these glycogen molecules will then be stored in either liver or muscles. Okay, so when we are、uh, when in the future when we have a lack of glucose supply, these glycogen can be converted back into glucose、uh, to release energy. Okay. And also, some of the glucose will also be converted into fat and stored in our liver. Okay, and that's how glucose is utilized in our body. Next is when talk about、uh, amino acids. You should remember that amino acid is actually the basic unit of protein. Okay, so after absorption of amino acids, these amino acids. Will then be used for、uh, synthesizing proteins in our body, and what is the function of protein? Let's have a look. It is for growth and repair. Okay, making new cells because、uh, each cell、uh, contain a lot of protein, and then、uh, the amino acid amino acid can also used for synthesize protein that is used to form enzymes and hemoglobin. Okay, next is antibodies for、uh, acting against Uh, pathogen or germs、uh, in our body defense system, and also some hormones are made up of protein. And also in your first term, you should also learn that、um, actually excess amino acid that we、um, have absorbed cannot be stored. And these amino acid, as they cannot be stored, they will be broken down in a process called deamination. We call this to on. Okay, in the liver, and the amino acid, after broken down by deamination, will be converted into two parts. The first part is urea, which is a、uh, a kind of metabolic waste that we have to、uh, remove from our body. Okay, and the other type and the other part of the amino acid will be converted into carbohydrates. Or fat in the liver, okay. And these carbohydrate either be used or the fat will be stored in our body. All right. Now that that's it about、uh, the the fate of the amino acids after absorption. Lastly, is about lipid or fat that we have absorbed, and、uh, you should know that、uh, lipid is used for forming cell membrane because、uh, cell membrane contains a lot of phospholipid. Okay, and also some hormones, for example, sex hormones, are formed from lipid. Okay, and then if、uh, we do not have enough、uh, carbohydrate, and lipid will be used for releasing energy. Okay, please also help me to change use in respiration to release energy. Okay, when necessary. And then, excess lipid or fat will be stored in three major areas. First is around the liver, under the skin, or uh, to uh, surround the internal organ 
okay, to protect our internal organs. Okay, now that's the fate of the absorb uh, of the absorbed food in our body. Now we have to fill in the uh, transport pathway of the water soluble uh, food that is a glucose and amino acid, and also the uh, fat. Okay, they are transported in our body by different pathway. Okay, here you can see uh, a diagram showing pathway of the absorbed food in our body. On page 19, there is a blank space and I would like you to draw with me together a simplified diagram of the uh, transport pathway of food in our body. Now, uh, still remember the major part of uh, for absorption of food in our body is the ileum of our small intestine, right? Because ileum is very long, which is 7 meters long, and it has some finger-like structure. What do we call them? The velus. And inside the velus, you can find a lot of blood capillaries, okay? And also, there is a central lacteal, okay? A central lacteal for the absorption of lipid. Right? Okay, so let's uh, draw this diagram first. Okay, this is a, a one velus uh, found in the small intestine for absorption of digested food. Now, after absorption of digested food, into the blood capillary. Still remember what kind of uh, food substances are absorbed into the blood capillaries. Correct, that is the water-soluble ones, that is the glucose or monosaccharides and amino acid. Okay, now these glucose and amino acid after absorption into the blood capillary will be transported to one of the major organs in our body, that is the liver okay and through one blood vessel which is known as hepatic portal vein and then inside the liver uh, the liver would uh, utilize some of the absorbed food and if you have too much glucose uh, the liver will convert the excess glucose into glycogen, right? If you have too much amino acid, the liver would uh, deaminate the excess amino acids, okay? So after some sort of treatment of the absorbed food in the liver and then blood carrying the absorbed food would leave the liver through another blood vessel, which is known as hepatic vein. The absorbed food will then be carried along the hepatic vein and eventually enter the heart. Okay. The name of the blood vessel that carry blood to the heart is the vena cava. Then, the blood carrying the absorbed food will then be pumped to the lungs. The blood would enter the heart again, and then the heart would pump the blood to all parts of the body. through aorta. The fat and fat-soluble uh, vitamins are absorbed into the lacteal, alright? It will be transported in the lymphatic system, okay? 
through lymph vessels. And then, eventually, this lymph vessel will then join in the blood vessel before the vena cava. All the lipid and the lipid soluble vitamin will then enter the blood and then first to the heart and then uh, the lipid and the lipid soluble vitamin will then be transported to different parts of the body through the aorta okay now i want you to write down this pathway in these two boxes these two water soluble uh, food substances will then will first enter the capillaries of the villus okay and then uh, the food will then be carried to the liver through the hepatic portal vein to the liver the blood uh, carrying the uh, the absorbed food will then leave the liver through the hepatic vein and then the hepatic vein carries the blood with a lot of absorbed food to the vena cava eventually to the heart okay and then the heart would uh, pump the blood carrying the absorbed food to the lungs first and then the uh, the blood would enter the heart again and then be pumped again out through the aorta and then carrying this blood to all parts of the body except the lungs this is how blood is transported and carry the absorbed food so let's uh, have a look at how lipid is transported firstly the lipid and the uh, lipid soluble vitamin A and D would enter the lacteal of the villus right and then the lacteal of the villus would carry these, uh, the content through lymph vessels. Okay? And then, the content will then join the blood in a blood vessel very near to the vena cava, right? So we just write, need to write, they will carry um, the content to a vein near the heart. And eventually, enters the vena cava okay and then the content will then join the blood circulatory system and the rest uh, of the pathway is actually uh, the same as the one of the water soluble uh, absorbed food and the blood would uh, enters the heart and then to the lungs okay and then to the heart again What's next? And then to aorta and finally different parts of the body except the lungs. Okay, so this is the transport pathway of lipid and lipid soluble vitamin in our body. Now firstly uh, liver would store some of our absorb absorbed food. For example, it would store glycogen and also uh, iron, okay, which is used for uh, producing hemoglobin. And also, it can store vitamin A and D. All right. And uh, the liver is one of the major organ for maintain uh, for maintaining a blood a constant blood glucose level. When we do do not have enough glucose it will convert the stored glycogen into glucose okay but uh, when we have excess glucose the the reverse would take place glucose would then be converted into glycogen so um, liver is uh, the effector or one of the very important organ for maintaining uh, the blood glucose level constant in our body and then the amination I've already talked about that uh, previously is that excess amino acids cannot be stored rather it is the aminated okay the amino groups of the amino acid are converted into urea for excretion okay uh, while the the remaining parts 
will be converted into carbohydrates or fat. Uh, please refer to the molecules of life notes uh, for this for more details explanation of this part. Okay, next is production of bile. Uh, we've already mentioned that bile is a type of digestive juice uh, responsible for physical digestion of lipid, right? And uh, production of bile is actually um, in the liver, okay? And, and the bile is temporarily stored in the gallbladder, okay? I'm not going to talk uh, too much about this because I've already mentioned this in, uh, in, in the previous section. Finally, the liver can help us to detoxify some toxic substances such as alcohol and drugs. Okay, into harmless substances. All right. So all these are the functions of the liver in relation to food assimilation. Okay. Try to recite this uh, five points. All right. Finally, if um, the food that we have ingested cannot be digested or cannot be absorbed, these uh, unabsorbed food would form uh, feces. Okay. Uh, that have to be removed from our body through a process called egestion. Okay, now I have to um, stress that egestion is different from excretion. Okay, because egestion simply means the removal of unabsorbed and undigested food substance. However, excretion means the removal of metabolic waste. Okay, and metabolic waste means uh, the waste that is produced. By cells, okay. These are two different processes. Don't mix them up, okay? And these are the substances that are found that can be found in feces. Rectum, the very last part of the alimentary canal, is for temporary storage and for uh, muscle contraction that can use to expel uh, the feces out of the body, okay? And the anus is the uh, opening by which the feces are removed. So that's uh, the end of the whole. Nutrition in Human Part 2 and if you have any question feel free to join the uh, Q&A session to be held this Saturday or you can simply message me through whatever means if you have any questions, okay? Alright, that's it for today. Bye. Bye